This video is brought to you by PCBWay. And this is a fully automated microlab to determine the ammonia concentration in blood or urine. I build it because my blood has to be tested regularly for ammonia. The reason for this is that I suffer from cirrhosis of the liver. My Hills insurance only pays for the ammonia test once a year, which is far too less. I can't change my health insurance either, as no other insurance company would accept me with my medical conditions. Liver cirrhosis causes many symptoms, but the most acute for me is hepatic encephalopathy, also known as liver brain disorder. It's a potentially irreversible brain dysfunction caused by an insufficient detoxification function of the liver. In other words, with liver cirrhosis, the human body becomes increasingly poisoned with ammonia, a highly toxic cell toxin. Ammonia is also always present in the blood of a healthy human body, although the concentration is much lower. If the ammonia content of the urine is increased, the reason may be liver damage, but it may also be an indication of a kidney damage or a bacterial urinary tract infection. The first thing I did was look around for a highly sensitive colorimetric reagent for ammonia and came across the Bethelot method. This publicly available paper was extremely helpful. In the paper, sodium salicylate is used as a phenol source instead of the highly toxic phenol itself and the Bethelot reagent consists only of two reagents instead of three, which are simply mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio before use. The reaction mechanism of the Bezolot's reagent as prepared in the paper looks like this. I will refrain from a detailed description of the mechanism here and refer to the paper. However, another important hint emerged from the paper, namely that the absorption maximum is at 660 nanometers, arising from the use of salicylate rather than phenol. Once all that was sorted out, I drew a sketch of the general structure of the microlab. You can see here that the ammonia is expelled from the test sample using mild heat and that the test sample does not come in direct contact with the Bezolot's reagent. This is important because the Bezolot's reagent is also very sensitive to urea, which is always present in both urine and blood. Next, I drew all the relevant parts in CAT and designed the PCBs. Then I uploaded all the files to the PCB website and ordered them. For the first time I also used the CNC machining service from PCBWay. A nice feature on the PCB website is that you can view the manufacturing process at any time. Just one week later the package arrived. Here you can see the finished main controller of the microlab. 
the brain of the controller is a cheap Arduino Nano clone. The magnetic steerer essentially consists of a 3D printed part and two neodymium magnets. I decided to use a stepper motor to drive the magnetic steerer. The photodiode I use is the OPT101, a monolithic photodiode with an on-chip transimpedance amplifier. Since the 10-bit resolution of the analog inputs of the microcontroller is too imprecise, I use the ADS1115 for the photodiode, which provides 16-bit precision at 860 samples per second over I2C. Since I could not find an LED with 660 nanometers, I opted for a laser diode with the corresponding wavelengths. The driver circuit of the laser diode is located on the backside of the customized PCB. An aluminium sheet with the dimensions 200 by 200 millimeters and a thickness of 5 millimeters was used as a base plate. In the next step I assembled the laser photometer. I chose black silicone to attach the covers so that they can be removed again if necessary. The aluminium body of the heater has been beautifully CNC machined by PCB way. Look at that. I utilized heating bed insulation for 3D printers to insulate the body of the heater. Now all components could be screwed to the base plate. A 12V 70W cartridge heater for the hot end of a 3D printer is employed as a heating element.
An LM35 is used as a temperature sensor. It requires no additional hardware and can be read out directly with an Arduino. The sensor has an accuracy of plus minus 1 degree Celsius over the entire measuring range. The temperature of the heater is controlled by a PID algorithm. Next to the heater you can see a small air pump. It provides the air supply and can be controlled via PWM. I then attached heat sinks to the bottom of the base plate under the heater to prevent the base plate from heating up too much. Next, I started making the glassware. Here you can see the finished glass apparatus for the test sample. The gas diffuser was obtained from a small gas washing bottle with a fritted disc. Here I demonstrate how the gas diffuser works. After I had written a corresponding program for the microcontroller, it was time for a first test. The test should only determine whether the microlab is able to measure the concentrations of ammonia found in blood. I used a fresh container of 25% ammonia solution to prepare the test sample. A 25% ammonia solution means that 25 grams of ammonia is dissolved in 100 milliliters of the solution. One drop of the ammonia solution was then added to 200 milliliters of distilled water. This corresponds approximately to a concentration of 60 milligrams per liter.
As you can see, the transmittance of the Bethelot's reaction is almost zero at the end of the test, so I had used far too much ammonia. That means that it is feasible to determine the ammonia content in urine and blood with my micro lab. Of course, the test depends on many parameters, such as temperature and volume of the test sample, airflow, test duration, etc. Over the next few weeks I will have to carry out many tests with different concentrations in order to calculate a mathematical function using the data, which then outputs a concentration depending on the transmittance. What we haven't talked about yet is the question of how to reduce the ammonia concentration in the blood. To my knowledge, there is currently only one drug on the market for the treatment of symptoms of hepatic encephalopathy, which is based on l in L-aspartate. However, this drug had no significant effects on me. I will therefore have to carry out intensive research into this if I want to stay alive a little longer. Thank you very much for watching. Stay true. Stay you.